friends, my name is Maylin and welcome back to my channel. I am a flutist, music teacher, and performer located in the city of Toronto, Canada, and this is my series where we learn how to play the flute from scratch. So thank you again for joining me here today. In this video, we'll be learning a new note that is C sharp and also how to play in E major. Um, so if you do have any questions about the video, please feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. Also, if you are having any issues when it comes to practicing or you're just not sure how to structure your practice sessions or you just need a little bit of motivation, feel free to check out my free practice guide also located in the description down below. It outlines eight easy steps for you to follow to help you to get more productive practice sessions. Yeah, so without further ado, let's just get right into the video. All right, and as per usual, we'll be looking at my favorite book here, The Travel Rise Beginner's Book for the Flute Part 1, and we'll be skipping to page 31. So Mr. Y has right at the top here introducing C sharp, so I'm just going to put it right on the screen here. Um, so he has a little tip here because this is one of the most notorious notes to play on the flute. So he says, uh, be sure to support the flute correctly with the left hand see the pictures in the front of this book so this is just as a reminder um, because this note is so open it's really easy to put a lot of pressure on your right hand pinky so you want to make sure that you're still having a majority of the weight of the flute in your left hand uh, so making sure it again is on that uh, the little shelf that you make with your finger and then also that you're resting just a little bit of the balance of the rest of the flute on the thumb rather than on the uh, pinky because it's otherwise really easy to put a lot of pressure on it and that's going to be really bad for when you uh, continue to play the flute and you'll it's a really bad habit to break out of so make sure that you are doing that and you can really tell if you're able to just very gently um, put your finger right on top of that C sharp key um, without having any pain or pressure, especially in the right hand here. I, when I was younger, I used to have a lot of tension because again, I would put a lot of the weight there um, and I would find I'd get a shooting pain on the side of my hand that would go up my arm like that. So if you have any of that, make sure you stop, reset, and really think about, or you can even look in the mirror um, with how that is looking with your hand posture. And then another tip, just make sure that you're bringing your finger over top of the key, just like this. Um, so again, it's not coming up from underneath like that, hyperextending, so that again, you have, the, you have the most flexibility in getting that note. So now I'm going to play the C sharp for you, so you can get it in your ear. is notorious because it tends to sit really sharp in pitch so you want to make sure that when you're playing this note um, really be aware of where the pitch is you can use um, uh, an app that actually shows you where your pitch is um, the app that I have on my phone is called tunable I paid a few dollars for it a long time ago and uh, it's been really great it actually shows you exactly where your pitch is if you're flat or if you're sharp um, you can also get some free apps as well, so it's just like a tuning app that you can, you can do. Or you can also um, listen to other players, especially playing that note. Um, if you want, you can definitely go back to this video and listen to the notes that I just played a few times over to really get that C-sharp in your ear. Uh, it's really easy to get it really uh, sitting sharp, and that's what you don't want. And another pro tip, um, when you're putting your flute together, make sure that you leave about a two to three centimeter uh, gap between the the head joint and the body. So what, I, what I'm talking about is um, instead of pushing it in all the way, you want the little bit of the tenon here to be showing. So as you can see, you can see there's a very faint line on my flute. Um, I always keep it like that. Um, it depends again on the weather, but I keep it like that because if you push the head joint all the way in, um, the flute will be tuned way too high. So usually it's tuned at A equals 445 or 446. And generally, at least in Canada and North America, we play at about A equals 440, which is a little bit uh, flatter than A445. In Europe, they tend to play at A equals 442. It's a little bit sharper than how we play here in North America. But generally, we don't play as high as 445 or 446. So again, just make sure that you're um, taking out the head joint just a little bit so that you are generally in tune. 
Okay, so now we're going to play some of those tone exercises. So I'm going to put up the first one right here. Um, this one, I'm not going to do the clap account just because I think it's uh, easy enough to read through. Um, however, of course, I will play it for you. So again, you get, in, get it into your ear. And as a reminder, um, it is in 4-4, so that is four quarter notes per measure. Okay, so I'm going to play it at one, two, three, four. these ones you can use any one of these three or a combination of these three um, in your warm-ups so when you're warming up you really want to use this opportunity to listen to the sound and the quality of your tone and also it's a great way to warm up in really nice and relaxing way instead of just kind of like jumping into it um, just so that you can get your muscles warmed up so it's essentially like stretching before going for a run that's what these tone exercises are all right, so now I'm going to put the second one right over here. This one I will actually clap and count just because it is a little bit longer. Uh, and then I'll play it for you so you can get it in your ear as usual. So again, as a reminder, time signature is in 4-4, four, four, four quarter square measure. So I'm going to take it at the same tempo as before. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, rest. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, and I'll play it for you. So I'll, at the same tempo, one, two, three, four. to put up the last one right over here um, and this one I'm not gonna clap I'm just gonna play it for you um, so again you can just get it into your ear so one two three four <laughs> And again, if you feel like you're not very comfortable with any of those notes, feel free to write them in whenever you need them or to circle them whenever you feel like you're uncomfortable with the sharps as well. All right, so now we're going to move on to our next scale exercise. So this one is going to be an E major. So I'm gonna put it up right over here. So just as a reminder for the key signature, you, you always wanna look on the step, the very left and right beside the, the normal step marking. So right beside the treble clef and in between the time signature. So as a reminder, E major has four different sharps. So F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. Um, with key signatures, whenever again you see those little signs on the left on the staff, that means that every time you, you play an F, it's going to be an F sharp. Every time you play a C, it should be C sharp, G, G sharp, D, D sharp, of course. So don't feel bad if you feel like this one is a little bit tricky because it is very tricky. Um, e major always is a little bit, will throw you for a loop just because it feels really different compared to the other key signatures that we've been playing in before. So don't feel bad if this one will take you a little bit longer than some of the other exercises just because it does take a little bit of getting used to because it, again, it feels really weird. There's so many different accidentals in this key signature. So if it takes you anywhere from two weeks to maybe a month for this to get, for you to feel like it's comfortable, that's totally okay. Um, just feel, uh, just make sure that you're practicing it just a little bit every single day. And also don't hesitate to practice in really small chunks. So if that means just working between two notes where you, where you can hear a hiccup or something that's not quite right, definitely feel free to do that. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is again, we're gonna clap and count like usual and then I'll play it for you so you can get it in your ear. 
So I'm going to take it at one, two, three, and four. And one, and two, and three, four. One, and two, and three, four. Alright, so now I'll play it for you so you can get in your ear. And for this one, I would definitely uh, go ahead and write in any of the notes that you feel uncomfortable with. Um, definitely take note of D sharp, so that would be in the third bar of both of the different lines. Um, I always find that we tend to forget D sharp the most. Not sure why that is, just is. Okay, so I'm going to take it again at that same tempo. One, two, three, and four. And Very good. And with this one, I would also um, feel free to take at a much slower tempo to start with, especially because it will feel really weird, and then slowly work up the tempo as you start getting more comfortable with it. All right, and now we're going to be flipping the page over to 32, and we're going to be learning the sad waltz. It's another duet, so I'll be teaching the first part and the second part, and then you can play along as well. All right, so again, we're going to look first at the key signature. So it is an E major. Again, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. Um, instead of 4-4, four, four, we're in 3-4. Three, again, three uh, quarter notes per measure. And remember that nice wheel. One, two, three. One, two, three. And just as a reminder, we're going to also look at the tempo marking. And so that is vivace, which can either mean quickly or lively. All right. So it's kind of interesting when it's quickly or lively and it's sad. We'll see how it goes. So first we're going to do the first part. We're going to do the normal clap and count. And when I clap and count it, I'm not going to uh, clap the repeat, but I will play the repeat. All right, so we're going to start at a relatively slower tempo, um, and then we can always quicken it up after. So we're going to do it at one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, three, one, and two, and three, one, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, 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 three, one, and two, and three, one, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, so definitely feel free to slow that down if you feel like even that was a little bit too fast. Um, and what you can do is you can actually go down and if you click the little gear and then you can click the time and then you can slow that down maybe to like 0.75 and try that a few times. Okay, so now I'm going to play it for you. I'm going to play it at that same tempo. Um, just be aware of the dotted quarter notes and the eighths. That one also always tends to have a little bit of a hiccup there. Um, and then also the uh, eighth notes on the third line at the very end of the very first measure. There always tends to be a few hiccups there as well. So again, I, I will be playing it with the repeat. So I'm going to take it at the same tempo as well. So one, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> Again, we have a little um, musical notation right on the beginning, or sorry, right at the top of the third line at the very end, just before the first and the second ending. Uh, we have raw, 
second time. So that means RAL is short again for Rolentando, which means to slow down gradually, and that you're only going to do the second time. So when you heard me play it that time, uh, the first time I played it, I didn't do any RAL, I played it just as it is, and then at the end, uh, I did. And what I did essentially is I just slowed it down a little bit so that you're really settling on the first beat of the last measure. Okay, so now we're going to do the clapping and counting for the second part. And again, that uh, Rallentando would also apply as well. So we're going to take it again at that same tempo. So one, two, three, 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 one, and two, and three, one, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, rest, one, two, three, one, and two, and three, one, two, three, one, two. All right, very good. So now I'll play it for you so you can get it in your ear and don't forget about the Rallentando at the very end. Oh yeah, and then also we do have some dynamic mark markings written. So at the very beginning, we have that nice curvy F and that is forte, which means loudly. And then a few bars later, one, two, three, four, the fifth bar, um, we are actually playing piano, which means softly. So make sure that you do make a nice dramatic difference between the forte and the piano. today's video so thank you again for joining me here as always if you do have any questions feel free to drop them in the comment section down below also if, if you are having any issues with practicing feel free to check out my really nice and easy uh, free practice guide that will give you eight steps to make your practice sessions more productive and in next week's video we'll be learning uh, pieces in a major and as relative minor f sharp minor so thank you again and as always happy flitting